those hands if you just want the Lord to get the glory out of your life. Come on, we declare in this house, God, you get the glory. All the glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. It belongs to you this morning. Yeah, it belongs to you, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together. So we say you our prayer this morning. See you
hands if you give him all the glory this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And I would have to say if we were in North Carolina, you'd pronounce that right. It's Rawson. But my mother, who was Creole, met my father at Xavier, and she convinced him to change the pronunciation to Rusan. Hey. You know how you get Sadidi. <laughs> so it's actually Daryl Rusan. Rusan, we are glad. Can I tell you, we are absolutely glad that you are here. And the reason why the sound and everything is messing up is because everything is nervous because we have such greatness in the room. <laughs> the greatness in the room <laughs> is Almighty God. And but for His grace and mercy, I wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be here. So Amen. we give praise and honor to Him where it's due. Amen. And I know you're a man of God, because when you look at those boots. <laughs> <laughs> Who says on. you can't wear boots year-round in Florida? <laughs> Senator, let's, let's take it back a little bit. I wanted to do, instead of just having a typical speech or a typical talking to people, I think sometimes when we get a chance to share an interview style, we can sometimes uh, cover more ground. And one of the things, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was in Tampa uh, recently and was at a private meeting with a select group of men and pastors and leaders, and Senator was one of those guests. And as he began to share, one of the things that so impressed me was his testimony, which we'll get into in just a second. Uh, but I thought, you know, how powerful it was to have such a great man like yourself, uh, but with such a, a, a story, because sometimes people know your glory, but they don't really know your story. And, that's what we want to talk about today. So let's take it all the way back. You were born where? I was born in Charity Hospital, downtown New Orleans, raised in St. Petersburg, Florida, returned to New Orleans for college, and then law school at University of Florida. What was the thing about Xavier? You said something in the back. It's the only black... Uh... Catholic university in America, and it's the only Catholic university founded by a saint when Mother Catherine Drexel and the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament founded Xavier in 1922 for the Negro and Indian child because Loyola and the other Catholic universities were not taking black students, Pope John Paul canonized her in the year 2000 into sainthood, and that allowed us to lay claim as to be the only Catholic university founded by a saint. Wow. Beautiful. You are raised in New Orleans. How did you end up in St. Pete? Well, actually, we left New Orleans when I was five years old. My daddy was in the Air Force, and he was stationed at McDill, and they liked the Tampa Bay area, so they stayed. So I was actually raised in St. Petersburg and returned to New Orleans for college. Let's jump around a little bit. When you start, I think a lot of people get confused when you say senators versus congressmen. Can you break that down a little bit? What's a senator? Oh, what's a congressman? Absolutely. Uh, hold, hold on before you do that. How many of y'all know what a, y'all know the difference? Y'all don't know the difference in the trying to act like that. <laughs> All right, break it down. Congressman is on the federal level, U.S. representative as well as U.S. senators on the federal level. And then state senator and state representatives on the state level. We, there are 40 senators in the state of Florida. Six of us are African-American. And actually, the great Senator Chevron Jones, uh, an African-American, is the senator for this address. Uh, there are six of us in the Florida Senate. We serve districts. I serve District 19, which is St. Petersburg and Tampa, Riverview, Apollo Beach, Brandon, Ybor City, and Gulfport. So I'm the only senator in Tampa Bay that has both sides of the bay. Wow. My passion to serve comes from my uh, addiction history and recovery. 
and I thought that I could make a difference. Wow, wow. And we're going to get into that in just a little while. What a powerful testimony on that. Tell me, the, why is it important to uh, know your senator, or why is it important to understand and voting for your senator? Do we get a chance to vote for y'all? Is that how it works? Ooh, does, is that how it works? Y'all know that's how it works. Uh, voting matters. Elections have consequences. And we each must know our senators and our state representatives because we can't lead in a vacuum if we're good leaders. We need to hear from our constituents, live amongst our constituents. And because we make decisions on a state level that impact quality of education, that impact health care, that impact criminal justice and sentencing reform, uh, you know, all of those kinds of things we make decisions on. And it's important that you give input. It's important that we listen to you and respond and that you hold us accountable for those things that matter to you, like neighborhood and public safety. You know, I often hear people uh, say, you know, church should stay out of politics or, you know, religion has nothing to do with politics. And if I'm a Christian, how should I vote? Uh, because I'm a Christian, I don't vote. Uh, I'm, you know, a citizen of, of the king and that kind of stuff. How do you, what do you say to, to believers uh, in the sense of why we should be involved in voting and be aware of what's going on politically? Well, the real question is why not you? If you are Christians, if you claim to have a belief system, a value system, if you live by principles, why not you? And it's so ironic, we talk about this separation of church and state, yet every time we begin session, we start with prayer. And it's that foundation that you need to assert in the secular world. If we truly have values, and we want a better society, then why not the church? Why not the church? Senator, we can clap our hands for that, amen? You have, this month is National uh, Recovery Month, correct? Yes. Uh, you have a very, very uh, powerful testimony of overcoming and dealing with uh, drug abuse. I want you to talk about that. Well, first of all, I need to give thanks to Almighty God, the author and the finisher of my faith. It is because of God and the 12 step program of recovery, which is a spiritual program, that I can sit here in my right mind and share with you today. I have to make a disclaimer, however. I'm not proud of every step of my journey but I can no longer afford to live in shame or embarrassment. And by declaring my story and the grace of God, it's liberating for other people. But I am 23 years, five months, three weeks, and two days clean. Come on, y'all can do a whole lot better than that. Hallelujah. And that's, that's after smoking crack, snorting cocaine, drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana to excess. I spent nine years in eight different drug treatment programs across this country trying to figure out how to quit drinking and drugging. And actually, I have a special guest here today. Someone, when I walked into Freedom House in St. Petersburg to begin my home group meetings, gave me hope an inspiration that one day at a time, I could kick that habit. And I wanna thank her so kindly for the inspiration that she gave. But- Can we uh, have her stand up? <laughs> you know, you have to be careful when you break people's anonymity. <laughs> yes, she was one of the ones when I walked into the room who told me that if I just follow the set of principles, the program called Narcotics Anonymous, that I could make this thing. 
and I'm so grateful for the example. And I want my life, it's just my story, and I'm sticking to it, but it doesn't appear like what it was like, the fact that I'm sitting here today, but sleeping in dope holes, places with no running water, no electricity, scared to go to sleep because they might take my dope, take my life, or take my money, having guns put to my head, having the dope dealer call me everything but a child of God. People are living in tough times right now, and the pandemic has revealed an epidemic of addiction, opioid use, abuse, mental health challenges, and we all need to do things that will take care of our own health, because if we can't take care of us, we can't help other people. The actor just, uh, he's a great actor too. I loved uh, him in uh, Boardwalk Empire. He was also really good in The Wire. Michael K. Williams. Michael K. Williams. Yes. I remember hearing an interview that he did last year on NPR, and he was talking about how he had, uh, it was through a church that he actually got off drugs and was actually doing drugs while he was shooting The Wire. He had kind of fallen back a little bit, but then he had bounced back and obviously he was doing good, but recently, unfortunately, uh, he passed away. Speak to, speak to the issue of that, that, that it's always, you're never really out. As a recovering addict, I live daily with the prospect of relapse. But relapse is not a condition of recovery. Relapse occurs because of changed way of thinking. And you stop doing the things that you did to stay clean and stay sober. My heart goes out to every addict that dies from addiction because the program teaches us no addict need die. The addiction wants us dead. I'll never forget speaking at a funeral in St. Petersburg where a basketball player had driven to the top of the Skyway Bridge, called his mother and said that I'm hooked on crack and I don't see any other way out. And he jumped. And he wanted me to speak at his funeral as a recovering person and give some explanation. And all I could think of is that we've all had our own bridge experiences things where, that have happened to us where we've made choices. How many of you know about the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, that 24-mile stretch of bridge from Mississippi to Louisiana? Well, I drove it three times in one night with my knee to the steering wheel, crack pipe to my mouth, and with every hit I would take, I'd say, God, if you're God, take the steering wheel and make this car go over the side into the swampland, or blow my heart out with the next hit. But he didn't do it because he had a different mission for me. He had a different ministry for me. And he spared me. God kept me during the worst times of my addiction to be able to share openly and honestly with those who are still suffering to come into the rooms of recovery and live a new life. Amen. What, what was the turning point for you that made you go, okay, I, I gotta get ahead of this or I gotta get away Well, my this. first wife kicked me to the curb and ran over me with the bus. I ain't mad no more. Can I say it like that? Normal people, when they say, I'm going to the store, I'll be right back, they go to the store and come right back. But right back was four days later for me after I spent all the money on drugs. I'm not angry anymore. I understand now. Normal people don't use drugs in front of their kids thinking that they don't know. My second wife picked me up, dusted me off, told me she was going to love me till I learned to love myself. There was nothing I could do about it. She said she was gonna get on her knees and pray me through this alcohol and cocaine addiction and I might as well join her because she wasn't getting up till it was gone. She died from breast cancer. 
My son was four years old. I took the $80,000 life insurance policy and spent six of it on cocaine and alcohol over six months. I reached a critical moment where I had to make a decision. Was I gonna raise my four-year-old son or was I gonna continue the self-destructive path of addiction and drug use? I chose my son. My baby sister was the only one in the family who would agree to watch him while I went to treatment for the last time. So I dropped him off in North Carolina, caught the next flight smoking to Fort Lauderdale, paid $127 to a cab to drive me from Fort Lauderdale to West Palm Beach so I could get drunk all along the way. You ever had to have a last blast? <laughs> I hid a can of beer in the bushes outside and I walked into the detox around 11 o'clock the night of March 16, 1998. The doggonedest thing happened. The doctors were gone, the therapists were gone, the counselors were gone, there were two nurses on duty working the midnight shift of detox. And they had the audacity to hug me in my brokenness and tell me I was a worthwhile human being and I'm in a good place. They got me through the night. The next morning I woke up March 17th, 1998, St. Patty's Day, <laughs> the day the rest of the world was getting drunk. And that little voice was talking to me. I know you don't have voices talking to you. But he was saying, boy, is you crazy? What are you doing in treatment on St. Patty's Day? Let's go get drunk one more time. Free beer, green beer, happy hour. And it kept up all day. I had to look around in the detox to make sure no one else could hear this voice talking to me. Finally, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I said, you promised me we'll get high one more time. And we'll come back tomorrow. He said, yeah. Haven't I been there for you? Whenever life rejected you or you felt you got treated less than what you deserved or someone called you out your name, didn't you pick me up and I help you get through? I said, yeah, but you cost me a few consequences along the way. He said, don't worry about the consequences. Let's do this thing. So finally I said, okay, you go get it and I'll wait here for you. <laughs> And when you come back, we'll get high. He said, you stupid. Don't you know I can't go get this without you? I need your legs. I need your arms. I need your eyes. I need your hands. I need your feet. I said, you need all that? He said, how do you think we've been doing this thing? This is a weed program. I said, well, you're out of luck because I'm done. And March 17th, 1998, St. Patty's Day is my sober anniversary day. God played clue jokes on us sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he sends us a treatment on the day the rest of the world seems to be getting high. Getting high drunk. Senator, how does one... And I've never looked back. I, I moved back to St. Petersburg, sleeping on the floor of an office building downtown St. Pete with my four-year-old son. Wow. No car, no driver's license, no job, no house, nobody to believe in me but that boy. Illinois had taken my license for a five-year revocation because of two DUIs. And that's how I began my journey through recovery and meeting people like my friend at Freedom House who gave me a support group. Someone said, why don't you run for president of the NAACP? I said, you gotta be crazy. That venerable civil rights organization, me, a dope fiend, be president? They said, why not you? Are you walking your sobriety with integrity? Yes, so I ran. And out of 200 votes cast, I beat the lady who was currently sitting, sitting the president, beat her by 16 votes. She had been president for 21 years of the NAACP. And for five years, I ran the NAACP. Then they said, why don't you run for the Florida House of Representatives? I said, politics? Me, a recovering drug addict? They said, why not you? So I ran. And at the first debate at the St. Petersburg Yacht Club on beautiful Tampa Bay, my opponent stood up. He said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is such and such. I've served you well for this, on the city council of St. Petersburg. Seven years, not a blemish on my record. But before I tell you about me, let me tell you about Daryl Roussan. 
He's a crackhead. He's been arrested two times for DUI. He's this, he's that. You ever had somebody read your inventory? <laughs> you ever had somebody see the toothpick in your eye while ignoring the log in theirs? Well, then it was my turn to get up. And I stood there, and like most men do, I nervously adjusted my tie, buttoned my coat, and I looked around at those 400 people, maybe 15 looked like me, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, everything my opponent said about me is true. Yeah. It is absolutely true. I said, but this is a special election. And it's not special because Governor Christ has elevated Representative Frank Peterman to become the new secretary of the Department of Juvenile Justice, vacating the seat, requiring a special election. That's not what makes it special. What makes it special is the election is March 25th, 2008. And that's two days after Easter Sunday. So we are campaigning, we're politicking, we're running through the season of Lent, the season of redemption, the season of resurrection that leads to new life. Mm. How dare a man stand up and suggest that another man can't become something because of what he used to be. They gave me a standing ovation. He came in third place. And for eight years, I served the constituents of Tampa Bay. And when I ran for the Senate, they said it was impossible. No St. Petersburg guy had ever won a Tampa Senate seat. But I ran because I had a mission and I wanted to impart hope to others coming behind me. And in spite of my addiction issues, not one newspaper ad, not one of tens of thousands of flyers and mailers going to individual voters' houses, not one TV spot, not one radio spot attacked me because of my addiction, because I owned it. And when you own it Come on. and walk it with integrity, what are they going to do? Vote you out? I go home. And that ain't a bad place to be today. Amen. I want to ask you, uh, we got a couple more minutes. First off, uh, let's clap our hands and say amen. What a, what a powerful, <laughs> powerful, powerful. I love it because it's, it's, it's not only a powerful story, but it's a powerful journey. And then it's a powerful testament to what you just referred to, and that is the restoring power of God. What God can do, if he can do it for you, he can do it for anybody. That's right. I want to speak to... Uh, how we, how we avoid people from getting addicted to uh, drugs. Is there a gateway? I hear certain things called gateway drugs or uh, peer pressure. What is it that you can say to this congregation to help us understand how that, number one, can this happen to anybody? Are we all uh, subject to possibly going down that road? And if so, what are the signs to look for? Or what do we need to try to teach our kids to avoid? The best thing that we can do is education, prevention, and treatment. I suffered from the lack of enough disease. I didn't feel like I was good enough. I didn't feel like I was good looking enough. I couldn't wax poetic with the women. I wasn't Michael Jordan with the basketball. I wasn't Walter Payton with the football. And for me, I fell into drugs and alcohol because it gave me a sense of, of what I was lacking. It filled a void. We need to start early on with our children, imbuing in them a spirit of power, an acceptance of who they are whose they are, and what their mission and ministry should be in life. There are signs to look for. This pandemic is ripping the scab off the wound. People begin to isolate. They suffer losses, grief issues, loss of normalcy. And it's sometimes easy to look outside yourself 
for solutions rather than the power within or the connecting power, healing power of the Holy Spirit. What do you, is there such a thing as a gateway drug? You know, the, the science is still out on that. Um, there are gateway drugs. It's called alcohol. It's called marijuana. It's called opioids. It's called cocaine. It's called so many things. Uh, you know, if you don't start, you don't get high. And that takes education and prevention. How do you know when you're an addict? Or do you know? You know because your life begins and ends around the use of drugs. See, I was the kind of guy that, and I still don't understand people who drink for taste. I mean, can I be honest? I drank for the effect. It was the feeling that I was looking for. It wasn't the taste. And when you begin to drink and drug because you want to heighten the high, lower the low, you know you're addicted. Yeah. When you can't get there on your own. When you can't get there on your own. And see, I've learned these last 23 years through the program of recovery, how to cope, how to get by yeah. without using drugs or alcohol. So it is possible to live your life not using drugs if you were a, a drug addict before. It is possible. It is possible. Yes. And I must give a shout out to the Rubenstein Law Firm that supports me in my public service. 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Because you they are, are you're an attorney. You, you're still I a, am an attorney. So you're still I, an active attorney, a lawyer, as well as, because uh, I don't think people understand that. Senators don't get paid really that. Well, we get the whopping sum of $29,000 a year to be a state senator. Most of us have to have real jobs. And some of us have great op employers, opportunities to work with a statewide team of lawyers like the Rubenstein Law Firm that represents people like me and you involved in accidents. They support my public service. They allow me to fight for you from the courthouse to the Capitol House and all points in between. So if you want a real fighter, <laughs> 1-800-FL-LEGAL. <laughs> Listen, Senator, I'm going to have you, uh, place off me, please. I'm going to have you pray uh, a prayer uh, for every family in here and for every person in here uh, that may or may not be dealing or battling with uh, an addiction of any kind or that may have family members uh, that might be uh, dealing with something. I also want you to pray uh, for hope. Pray for hope. Uh, there's a lot of hopelessness. Uh, you can even feel it sometimes even in the room. Sometimes I feel like, am I the only person trying to push hope? <laughs> we need, instead of dope pushes, we need some hope pushes. We need to walk in here and give us hope. And I want you to pray for hope today for, uh, for God's people. We need hope. Uh, we're going through a lot. Uh, but I want to encourage you. I, I thank God for this man of God coming all the way from Tampa and taking out time uh, to be here with you. A very important figure in our community. And I don't want us to take uh, what God is doing and what God gives us as an opportunity for people like this to come by uh, and be a blessing to us. You say, oh, well, Pastor, I don't deal with drugs and whatnot, or that's not in my home. You don't know what's coming down the road. Uh, for any of your children or your grandchildren or anything. And so it's always important that if God allows you in a presence like this to hear something like this is for a reason. It might be for a neighbor's child. You just never know uh, what's going on. And so it's always we, we, we perk up when we have a strategic opportunity like this to hear from a living epistle is what you are. You are a living epistle. We watch the journey of David. We watch the journey of 
uh, Joseph. We watch the journey of uh, Job and so many others through the word of God. But here we have a living epistle of, of a man that literally was, I would say society had counted you out, life had counted you out, and there's no real scientific reason why you should be here today. You should have been dead and gone. But the reality that you are sitting here, not only just sitting here and just breathing under a tree somewhere, being alive, but thriving as a successful attorney, as well as a state senator, as well as one that has figured out that it's all about the mercy and the grace of God, I think it's an honor and it's a privilege to have such a person with us today. Oh Lord, in love, thine ear bow down. Hear thy people pray. Hallelujah. May that love that knows no bounds upon us be this day. I will never forget the day I asked for help, the hopelessness, the loneliness, the anger, the fear, the deep gut rage, the gift of desperation. The bottom became my gift of desperation. I became desperate to change. And whether I believed I could or whether I believed I couldn't, I knew I was right. Lord, we lift your child up today, your children, the ones who by their lives are walking examples, are radically evolving miracles, who have learned to live life one day at a time, struggling but overcoming. And in this month of National Recovery Month, we pray for families with loved ones that are suffering and struggling. May they find peace and serenity in your loving arms. May they get a program and follow it to the best of their ability. Yeah. My mother once wrote me a letter in 1987. She said, son, I love you. I love you enough to give you back to God who gave you to me. I trust that in his infinite wisdom and mercy, he will care for you better than your mama can. Mm. I've raised you once. I've taught you the best I know how, right from wrong. If you're willing to blow your sobriety by going back into the devil's den, do not call me. Do not write me. I do not want to wear, know where you are or how you are because I just trust God. We pray for the families that have to exercise tough love, the strength, the courage to shine in weak moments. God, thank you for your loving grace and mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for Senator Rusin. I said it right? Rusin. From this point on, we can change the trajectory of how it's going to turn out. Anybody believe in God for breakthrough for the rest of the year? Yes. Clap your hands if you are. Come on, clap your hands if you are. I don't know about you, but I believe in God that September, October, November, and December are going to be victorious months for me and my family. Is there anybody with me? Hey, I said September, October, November, and December 
are going to be victorious months for me and my family. Is there anybody with me? Is there anybody with me? Let's go. Say, block the hater. 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 You're in here today and you need prayer. Would you wave at me right quick? Say, Pastor, I need prayer today. Anybody? Would you make your way down to the front at this time? Make your way down to the front at this time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. The presence of the Lord is in this. Chris, it's good to see you. God bless you. Clap your hands. We prayed for him. And he's standing here today. Let's say amen. Come on, clap your hands for him. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is a healing God. I said God is a healing God. I said God is a healing God, church. I said God is a healing God. When the medicine won't work, God is a healing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a healing God. Those of you that are down front, I want you to lift your hands. I want to believe God. I've been looking for him. I got some shoes I want you to do. You're missing your blessing, missing church, boy. I got you. Make sure you see me after church. Come on, get your faith up. Get your faith up. Get your faith up. 
Get your faith up. We're believing God for healing. We're believing God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Here's what I hear God saying. I hear God saying there's protection for you, that there's direction for you, and that there is hope for you. I hear the Holy Spirit say, get ready for that encouragement that you've been looking for. It's almost like a push. Somebody's pushing you at the back, and the Holy Spirit is getting ready to push you forward. That those of you that lost your energy, those of you that lost your strength, get ready for the wind of the Holy Spirit to begin to push you forward, almost like a sail. You know, just open up your sail and just let God begin to guide you. You say, Pastor, I have no strength at all. With a sailboat, you don't need strength. All you just need to do is open the sail. Hallelujah. Come on, church. And the wind just begins to blow you. So I just want you to rest on the Lord today. I want you to let your praise be that blocker. And I want you to know that everything that you think is defeating your life is only in your mind. I want you to know that God has given you the victory. Hallelujah. I feel like I need to say that again for somebody. God has given you the victory. I want you to know the victory is yours. It's a gift. Hallelujah. And God gives it to you today. And all you have to do is just receive a gift you don't have to work for, a gift you don't have to pay for, a gift you just have to receive. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to believe. So, Father, we believe you today. We trust you today. And we come in agreement with those that are here today. And as I begin to pray for you, church, I'm going to ask. They're going to begin to sing this worship song. As I begin to pray for you, and as the different leaders begin to come in agreement with you, I want you to believe God for whatever it is that you need done in your life. Hallelujah. And I'm convinced, I'm confident enough that if you have the faith, that you will have just what you need today. I believe God today so strongly, hallelujah, that you don't have to wait on it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But I believe you can have a now victory today. People don't know what you've been through. People don't know what you're struggling with. Folks don't know how much you almost did not make it here today. But I give God praise that you fought enough fight to get yourself here today. And I believe that this is a pivotal moment for you. You fought your way to get here just so God can do what he's getting ready to do right now in Jesus' name. So begin to lift your hands. Those of you, begin to stretch your hands for those that are out front here. And let's begin to believe God for miracles after miracles in Jesus' name. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. Crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all i tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it you choose someone like me to carry your victory Perfection can never hurt it. Forget what we don't deserve it. But you choose the broken things to raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants for when you stand on defeat. Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Tried so hard to see it. 
Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You get what you don't deserve it But you choose the broken things To raise them to the glory Hey church, you know, this is one of the greatest times to be a believer, that we can trust God in all that we say and do. And I challenge you today, according to Malachi chapter three, that we bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food, God says, in my house. He goes on to say, test me or provoke me or push me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out you so many blessings that you won't have room. That tithing is the opportunity for God to open within us the blessings of God. You know, poverty is a spirit. It's a mentality. You can have, there are certain people that you can give a thousand, hundreds of thousand dollars to today and within a year's time they'll be right back in financial calamity because of the mentality that they have and the bible is saying here that when we put god first because tithing is all about first that when we make god first in our life he then begins to open within us the ideas the creativity the courage to become resourceful because god is our source not man and in proverbs chapter 3 the bible says that we are to honor the lord with our wealth that we are to honor him with our first fruit and our produce and that when we do that our barns the scripture says will be filled with plenty and that our vats will be bursting with wine it's so important that we understand that god is saying to the believers today make sure you keep me first in the areas of resources and tithing and in giving you see anybody can clap their hands it costs you absolutely nothing anybody can shout that causes nothing. Dance. They were doing that in the nightclub just the other day. It doesn't matter. That stuff doesn't cost you anything. When God knows you're maturing in God is when you begin to give of your substance, your resources, your life source, your time, which is your resources, your money, the things that you have worked hard to invest and to pay for and to receive. When you begin to put God first over that, it says to God, I, you're, you, I trust you with my life. I trust you with my survival. I trust you to be my source and that I understand that all of this that I have is because of you. And so I pray today that you begin to change your mentality from poverty to prosperity by just understanding that God is your source and you place him first with your tithe and with your offering. And as you do that, it will not only be a blessing to the church, to the ministry of God, but watch this, it's gonna open up the floodgates of heaven for you and your family, for your children's children to be blessed. God bless you and your giving today. Welcome to Now News. 
We are the Now Church, and we are people impacting people. We want to make sure your family stays connected with us. So stay tuned and listen to our announcements. Join us every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for Sunday morning worship service. A mask is required. CDC requirements will be in full effect. We look forward to worshiping with you. If you want to catch service early, join us Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. for our Saturday night service at Now Church FL on YouTube and Facebook Live. You don't want to miss it. And remember, every Sunday, our services are 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. And don't forget, Tuesday's midweek service starts at 7.30 p.m., streaming live from YouTube and Facebook at Now Church FL. If you didn't know, now you know. Our children's ministry is open. If you're interested in volunteering, please let us know. We would love to have you. This one's for all of our ladies. Our Women of Worth WOW Conference is September 24th through 26th. We have special guests, Martha Manuzzi, September 24th, which is Friday at 7.30 p.m. On Saturday, we have special guest Lisa Page Brooks at 10 a.m. And on Sunday, we have special guest April Osteen Simmons. Make sure you are in the building. This is one fun, women-filled, packed weekend that you do not want to miss. If you're interested in joining the Now Church family, make sure you head over to our website and sign up for our membership orientation. If you're interested in making a public commitment to Christ, join us for baptism. Visit our website to sign up. Need a little encouragement? Need a little pick-me-up? Join us every day for our daily live devotional on Instagram and Facebook Live at 6 p.m. and share it with a friend. If you have a prayer request, our prayer lines are open. Make sure to send your request to prayer at worshipinthenow.com. We want to pray with you. Our Now Church family is blessed to be a blessing, so we would love for you to be a part of our Now Life groups. Visit our website, and click on ministries to sign up to be a part of a community where you're connected with like-minded people. Our ministries are changing lives. So if you wanna be a part of one of our ministries, visit our website for more information on our meeting times and locations. To shop Now Church accessories and apparel, visit our website, www.nowchurchfl.com and click shop. It's important that we stay faithful in our giving. So we give you four ways to give. You can give via Cash App, Now Church FL, You can give by text, by texting the word NOW to 73256. You can give by mail at P.O. Box 5767, Hollywood, Florida 33083. Or you can give online at nowchurchfl.com. We want to make sure you stay connected with us. So make sure to follow our social pages at nowchurchfl. Now head on over to our website and download our outline so you can follow along in service with us. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. For more information, visit www.nowchurchfl.com. Hey folks, Pastor Javen here, and I want to give you a personal invitation to join us live right here at the Now Church. I want you to know that right in this place of grace, the anointing of God flows every Sunday at 1030 a.m., and you need to be here. The Bible says, don't neglect the fellowship of the saints. The scripture says, where two or three come together in his name, he's in the midst. And can I tell you, every time we've been in church, the power of God has showed up and showed out, and people are getting breakthrough, people are getting healed, people are getting set free, and you need to be here. So I want you to join us right here. It's open seating. We're doing safe distancing. They're checking your temperatures, sanitizing the whole nine yards. So it's safe to be in the place of grace. And so I hope to see you this Sunday at 1030 a.m. right here at the Now Church at our new location at the Now Center. God bless you. Lord, we pray for now opportunities, now resources, now ideas, now dreams, now homes, now land, now businesses, now anointing, now love, now mind, now faith, now body, a now life with now beginnings. We declare it, we decree it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for watching online our services. We encourage you to keep on following us on our social media at uh, Now Church FM. 
We are in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you turn on your notifications. Listen, this week we have our midweek service at 7.30 p.m. online. Make sure you tune in, you share the link with your family and friends, okay? We want to know that you're there watching, so take a picture and tag us using the hashtag now church at home we're gonna see your pictures and we're gonna post it on our social media accounts also we have three services on sundays yes you heard right three services on sundays at 9 a.m 11 a.m and 6 p.m so we are very happy about that and we're going live on instagram every day this week so make sure you're tuned in with us. We're going to have a minister or pastor giving you an encouraging word and praying for you. Uh...